And they did it with, what, like nine different types of dating methods or something? Yeah. They used ten samples of KBS tough after it. It had already been dated 20 times, and everybody agreed it's 212 million years old. Okay, can you give me the name of this? Because like, what you're saying here, this, this is a falsification revolution. Good. What you have here, this no, it's not a false evidence. I'm okay. not even a creationist. I mean, I'm a creationist, and I would not even say this falsifies evolution. No, absolutely, it, it does. Okay. If, if uh, you found a human 212 million years old, you have falsified the Okay, then, okay. Then you need to look up uh, Richard Leakey's skull, K-N-M-E-R, which, which is for Kenya National Museum, uh, ER 1470. 1470. Before that was found, the KBS Tuff, KBS for K. Brenzenmeyer, uh, KBS Tuff, T-U-F-F, had been securely dated at 212 to 230 million years old based on potassium argon dating. Richard Leakey finds a normal human skull under the KBS Tuff. Everybody panics and says, wow, we've got to go back and redate this. You need to well, read yeah, this. because you're talking about overturning the entire field of science. Okay, here's an article. Uh, 1880, J.D. Whitney was the state geologist in California. Can, can, I, can I make one more statement before you go on? Okay. I, I want to be honest. Sure. I am intellectually honest enough to admit that if this is true, the entire theory of evolution is wrong. But then you're in error because it's not. They're going to say, and I've actually emailed 40 different evolutionists about this type of stuff, and said if I found an out-of-place fossil, what would that mean? And they've given me tons of examples. Well, it could have been relocated by some predator. It could have fallen down a crack. It could have done this or that. It could have been, you know, sucked back down and then covered back over with dirt. There's so many different ways to accommodate anything you find out there in evolutionary theory. I mean, to you, this may falsify, and that's good, because if you check into this, then you're going to come over here and be the third voice on the radio, hopefully. But to everybody else out there in the world who is, you know, thumping their evolution books, I guess, this is not enough. Nothing is enough. You can't falsify the theory because it, they have to have it. They Let me just give you an example. Uh, Jared, we've had you on a long time. We've got a lot of people waiting. Let me just take yeah, one, one example Sorry. to think about, okay? Okay. Um, Michael Cremo and Richard Thompson wrote an excellent book called The Hidden History of the Human Race. Now, they are both uh, very avid evolutionists. They live in California. Uh, Hidden History of the Human Race. Uh, 19, in 1880, J.D. Whitney, who was the state geologist for California published a very lengthy review of advanced stone tools, mortars, pestles, flint points, etc., found in California gold mines. They were mining in an area in California under uh, Table Mountain, and they were in an area that was under lava, supposed to be 55 million years old, way before man ever got here. So okay. your current perspective on all this is that there, is, there, are, there are these falsifying pieces of evidence. There are thousands of falsifying pieces of evidence, but you, you wouldn't listen to them if I showed them to you. If God yeah, himself showed them to you. And you think it's like a conspiracy for the, for the scientists to don't accept it? That I don't know. That, I'm just telling you, here's, here's the evidence. Okay. Well, it's like I just said, they feel that the evidence supporting evolution is overwhelmingly, you know, I guess overbearing against the evidence, quote, against it. And so they're going to change and relook at anything that is allegedly against evolutionary theory to see what the truth, but that in quotes, really is. If, if I had to play the, 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 uh, the clinical psychologist for a second, I would probably say that what you're doing there is kind of projecting. Your theory is not falsifiable. And so you think the evolutionary theory is not falsifiable. No, that's, that's what you've been doing for the last half hour, Jared. Let me, finish, uh, let me finish reading this quote here now, and then we'll take your last comment. Okay. J.D. Whitney published a very lengthy review. There was no question these advanced stone tools are found under lava supposed to be 55 million years old. Professor Holmes, W.H. Holmes, H-O-L-M-E-S, of the Smithsonian Institute, wrote this. He said, Perhaps if Professor Whitney had fully appreciated the story of human evolution as it is understood today, he would have hesitated to announce the conclusions, notwithstanding the imposing array of testimony with which he was confronted. End quote. Professor Holmes said, if Whitney understood how important our theory was, he wouldn't have told us about this evidence that goes against our theory. Same thing happened to Thomas E. Lee, L-E-E, -E, at the National Museum of Canada. He was digging in glacial deposits in Lake Huron, in uh, glacial deposits that were supposed to be 125,000 years old, way before man got to Canada. But he found all kinds of human artifacts. So the director of the museum was fired for refusing to fire the guy who discovered it because they said, quote, it would have forced the rewriting of almost every book in the business, end quote. 
can you give me the source of this? Like, sure. Because this is, this is extremely interesting. Okay, The Hidden History of the Human Race. Michael Cremo, C-R-E-M-O. C-R-E-M-O. Now, he is a far cry from a creationist. Okay. Um, that was Michael Cremo? Michael, uh, there's a middle name, A, middle, middle initial A, Cremo. Okay. You, I, I, I will definitely read up on all of this. You read up on it. Be sure to get the book, uh, read the chapter called The Dating Game, which is the last chapter in the book Bones of Contention by Marvin Lubinow. Marvin Lubinow takes the dates given by the evolutionists and accepts them and says, okay, well, let's accept this. Now, what's the problem with this? You, if you're really open-minded, as I think you are, you know, I think you're just brainwashed, and we, that's what we're here to help for. Why we do the program? Well, Marvin Lubinow, I was reading his newest uh, revised book, and he's actually a, a college professor here, and he takes his students and he has them write a paper, and he's a Christian guy, and he has them write a paper on human history, the evolution of man, and he says you can only use secular Resources. You cannot read my book. You cannot use any creationist scientist. You can only use secular resources to write your paper. And he says some of his students come back completely flustered because they can't figure out the truth of this because it's, it's different in every book you read. You have one person saying it's this old, another person saying, wait a second, that can't be true. They must have some, you know, geochemical contamination or something like that. And you have another person shouting on both of them, telling them they're stupid. They got their whole idea wrong. Let's All right. Know for uh, can, I, can I say one can more thing? Last comment, and we got to go on. Go ahead. Oh, okay, good. Um, I grew up as a Christian, and I didn't learn about the theory of evolution until last year. So I have not been brainwashed as I have been. But well, it's it's all my intellectual curiosity satisfy myself. I, it's not like I didn't believe this my whole life. I'm just like... You didn't learn about evolution until last year? Well, That's you, correct. Then you just got brainwashed in the last year. Well, it. That's not I get brainwashed. I didn't, I didn't learn about this in, in college. I went out. I went out on my own and read about it because I was curious. Uh huh. That's not brainwashed. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, good. Well, you studied those sources we gave you, and keep calling in, and uh, we'll get you converted back to Christ before it's over with. Uh, we'll see about that. Guys. No, we will. Hey, thanks a lot. All right, Jared. Thanks for calling, folks. We got about a bazillion instant messages. Sorry for keeping you all waiting.